Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching. This is going to be part two of the first episode in this series of exploration. We just uh, came off the steps from the Mortimer Mansion and now we are going to look through the streets. Let me turn the camera so that we can continue our journey of exploration. We're going to go across the street and we're going to take a look at the two murals probably the time that we're going to have available is just going to let us see two of the murals that are exhibited on the, the buildings that we are going to be walking by if you're joining in welcome we got disconnected i want to continue throughout and do the second portion of the first exploration but broke off and this sometimes happens uh, with the many buildings and you move around uh, your connection may become uh, more dis a little bit destabilized and the problem with that is that the broadcast can be interrupted but what I'll do if in the case that happens what I'll do is I'll just basically continue the next video maybe the same day at the same moment or at a later time We'll, we'll start at that particular point where we broke off until we see all of Manhattan or all of the sites that I prepared for us to explore, for us to explore in this creative visualization series. And we are approaching it. And this is how this is going to basically work. We are walking and we encounter these incredible interpretations that just take your breath away sometimes I'm going to get as close as possible that I can to it to see if I can see any plaque or any sand of what this is I watch Urbanists all the time with Ariel Vieira the live walking tours just spotted me George, that is very cool. Live videos. Urbanists, yes, I've heard of Urbanists as well. This, in this section that we are, where we're exploring, in a way, we're exploring the city. And we're stopping to take a closer look at these elements that define the creativity of the place now Washington Heights is a very special neighborhood incredible history as you saw we just walked by the Morris Jumel mansion and uh, cool well this is an interesting experience I wasn't expecting the comments so very much but it, 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 it it gives for a, a different type of video organization. Yeah, it's very cool. I am beginning to connect with it. I just happened to turn, tune in to doing a video. I had done one a, a couple of months ago, but now things have changed so much. It's, it's now there are masks and, and all of these different controls. Like It's amazing how fast this evolves. And watching the comments in real time, uh, it's interesting. If you have any questions about what you see, let me know. Very cool. George, where are you tuning in from? This is public school number four. It's an elementary school. Very young children go here. Uh, kindergarten, pre-K as well. I don't know if they have pre-K, but probably. And up until the fifth grade. So it's a, to have this school here and to see this mural creates a very interesting dynamic. Like Harlem, the northern sections of New York have had a very tough reality when it comes to controlled substances. You can see that reflected over there. And the best way to deal with these sorts of epidemics or social ills is to educate. 
say no to drugs is the message behind it direct to the point effective the work is composed of three panels let me see let me try to zoom in zoom out rather you see a figure holding a boom box interesting you would have seen this you would have seen this if you walk through these streets in the 90s the 80s and 90s but this is really the 90s Today everyone has an iPhone, Yerbas, George, I see you are originally from New York, that's very cool, now you're in LA, cool, 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 cool. Wow, to creatively visualize these realities using the things that we just see walking around in New York you're walking you might be getting offered say no and the result a happy community on the edge of this building so technically this work is one two three four four stories tall and it's a work from the early, from the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, there's a plaque over there, or like a sign. Let me see. 1991. 1991 City Arts is the organization, and you also read the names of all the people who worked on this this is a community effort and since that time since 1991 hundreds upon hundreds of children have experienced this every school day this school has been here since 1995 sorry yeah yeah 1995 so for over 22 years people have been children especially have been experiencing this mural over here say no drugs the vision at the time was very contemporary children would have been able to identify with this type of vocabulary they would have seen graffiti would have been a more common thing people walking with their uh, boom boxes and the hairstyles as well even Twenty-five years later, we have the divisions have changed, but in a way remain the same because the lessons still need to be learned. We still have issues with uh, controlled substances. New epidemics are emerging, and stuff like this is basically a tool. You can pick up on that dynamic of tools there with the tools that you actually see represented: the ruler, the hammer. And the pencil is the tool that basically zooms, zones you in, drives you in to that world, to when this work was created. This is the quality of transcending time. Going to that different time. So yeah, here we have this example. There's another work. I see that the phone is behaving, so I'll go to the next work in this exploration. And check it out and see how the community is reflected. I mean, this is what we see today, but this has been so many different things and continues to become other things. It's changing right now as I do this video this neighborhood is transitioning and becoming a more gentrified section of New York you can pick up those gentrifiers for example across the street at Dunkin Donuts the big chains before Dunkin Donuts you would have gone to the local 
restaurant here and you will get served something that is not as incredibly globalized George, you say you love the history of New York City the Morris Jumel mansion, am I going into the Morris Jumel mansion? I just came from her, she's, uh, she's behind in the, um, in the first video, in the first part of this exploration if you want check it out but I'll be repeating the cycle so basically what I'm doing is I'm exploring Panhand's creative creative sites and specifically the works of arts and the murals and see how it reflects on the community and I'll be going to different neighborhoods it's going to be probably over 20 episodes and then I'll start the cycle again so if you want to see and be a part of the exploration with the Morris Rumel mansion you can wait for the cycle to begin again in about two three months this is the work that we are now to explore and this is going to be the last because already the cell phone told me that there was only 20 minutes of battery left This is called Weaving Change Beyond the Shadows. And it's located on 159th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. And it's a work that was installed in 2013, painted in 2013. It wraps around the first floor of this building on the corner of 159th Street. Now I'm kind of speeding it up a little bit because I worry that the battery is going to run out. 159th Street is also called Lucille Berger, 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 Berger Way. She is the person, the woman who find, uh, who, who organized an organization called the Cloth, the Community League of the Heights. And uh, the Community League of the Heights it's an organization a community organization that that helps the people in this neighborhood cloth we know what a cloth is and uh, the letters in that particular word cloth c l o t h are the first letters in the Community League of the Heights. So this is basically a representation of the organization itself, a representation of the community and a representation of the organization. And uh, they're weaving change on it. The weaving begins over here, you see, beginning with this needle. Oh George, you say that I should post the videos on the site so you can view them anytime. I'll do that, I'll organize a post uh, and I'll publish it on my website. That's a good idea, thank you. The battery is going to run out. It told me that it's going to be 10 minutes on uh, when it runs out. So what I'll do is, on the next video exploration, I'll announce it and this is where we will begin. We will see how these uh, visuals reflect on this community because they're powerful. Like for example, just over here we already begin to pick up a biblical reference. Where have you heard of that particular reference? Maybe uh, if you know of a, a biblical reference in the Bible that uses a needle, let me know in the comments section. We'll begin our next uh, topic. Our next exploration is going to be cycle number one, episode number one, visual exploration in uh, Washington Heights, part three this time. We did part one, and this is part two. This is now part three. 
We'll begin over here and we'll visualize <laughs> Weaving Change Beyond the Shadows. The name of this work. That is it for this segment, for this uh, first episode, second part. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And uh, when I'm ready to announce, or when I'm ready to come back to this point, I'll announce it on the Facebook page, and you'll be able to connect. We even change beyond the shadows. I have to cut it off because, unfortunately, my battery is going to run out. All right. Have a good afternoon or morning, depending where you are and when you are watching this video. Bye-bye.